before it ever goes in the boat. Hey everybody, welcome. We're at Ward's Marine Electric this morning. We're here with Christy Ebert. Christy's gonna Hi, give Paul. us, how are you? Good, good to see you. Nice to see you. Christy's gonna give us a little rundown on three basics with electricity. We're gonna talk about safety. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about navigation and we're gonna talk about luxuries. Absolutely. Because that's really the big overview of where electricity falls into our world, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, super. So on our desk over here, we've got a couple of things to look at that we're gonna start with our sa safety area and things that are glaring, things that aren't quite so obvious. But as a broker, what makes sense when you're walking up to the boat? You wanna be looking for things that, are, that stand out, that maybe look right or maybe they look wrong. So let's talk about what maybe would look wrong. Sure. Well, and from our perspective, safety is always number one. It I has think to when be. people think about electric on boats, they think about their jacuzzi and they think about the galley and they think about the salon and the and the music playing. But for the us, air conditioner and the AV. Absolutely, <laughs> but for us, the electric is the most important system, but also the the one that is very critical and safety plays a big part. So yes, when you're walking up to the dock, you you obviously know that the boat's at the dock and it's going to be plugged into a pedestal. Right. And so the first thing, how does that happen? That's through a cord. So in some cases, you may see cords that look very old or, or that they, they've had um, some problems plugging in and they've been ripped out. And you wanna make sure that that cord, this is the life of that boat at the dock. So mm -hmm. remember whether your customer is on charter or your customer is just enjoying having a good time with his family, that electrical um, system is for the air conditioning, the jacuzzi, the galley, what's gonna be cooking for their, for their family, needs to make sure that this is a solid unit. So some of these can sit outside or their ends can be bad or, or they can even have some, some real problems there where, may where there was... may have been a time, absolutely, this can fall into the water if not properly taken from the boat to plug in. Um, the other thing you might see is something that looks like this, where it looks like the integrity, you know, it's... Well, yeah, it looks it's, like the connections are the done The connections properly. are done well, it's but, clean. It's, but what I would say is, looks good. Is, is, Paul, how do you go from 100 amp to 30 amp? Well, you um, can do it, but things are going to get a little warmer. Uh, aren't yeah, they? they are. They are. And the boat was not designed for that type of type of setup. And and here's one that's brand new. For example, when you when you have the boat go from 250s right. to to 100. So okay. this is a boat that has 250 amp cords. Right. They want to be comes able to plug of a in. 100 amp circuit that's on the dock. correct. Comes into so and this and is what's called a smart Y. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, the Hubble part number is actually a YQ plus, okay. but yes, it is a smart Y. So, so it, what it we're doing you. is we're dividing our power. We've got more than the boat can handle in one connection, mm -hmm. and we break it out into two connections, which are 250 amp, very Correct. normal. It, it uh, could also depend on the marina that you go to and what their power availability okay. is, so that gives you an option. Um, but, you know, one thing that when you're looking at a boat, so for example, let's say, you know, your, your standard Lazara or your Hatteras or your Viking or whatever, mm -hmm. unless it's brand new from the factory, another owner may have had it and they've added equipment. You, you need to know what equipment's been added in the last couple of years, let's say, for example, to do what's called a load analysis, which sounds very technical, but basically it's saying, here's the equipment, here's how often it's used, and here's how the boat manages it. You know, that's a great point, Christy, because uh, while a new boat coming out of the factory, we, we assume mm -hmm. that there has been a load analysis. There's mm -hmm. engineering and they're gonna bring in experts and they're gonna say, for this amount of equipment, this is the power mm -hmm. needs for the boat. And that's gonna speak to either the short cord or the generator considerations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the generator stuff a little bit more when we're over at the yard on the boat. But if we're talking about a, a, a brokerage boat that's mm -hmm. five years, 10 years, 25 years old, there may be completely different demands on the system than mm -hmm. when the boat was originally built. How do we address that? What do we do with that? Well, I, I would say the first answer would be to do a survey. And, okay. and one thing that you can do is you can, you can see the size of your generators, you can look into your power management, is everything running on one generator, and then you know the boat can be handled on one generator, the full load, and then every now and then it goes to the other generator and you're alternating, or do both generators have to run so that you're sharing the capacity of that power in order to um, have all of your uh, air conditioning salon and, and the luxuries that you want, and we'll go into that. And that's another important consideration as well with regard to the sizing of your generators. Correct. Because more is not better necessarily no. when it comes to generators. Absolutely Why not. is that? 
Well, because generators like to run at a certain speed and in a, in a certain percentage of their uh, capacity. The and so when capacity. you get the low capacity, that's correct. Okay. And so when you get to a, a, a place that's too low or a place that's too high, the generator can have soot or exhaust problems. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you end up mitigating and taking care of other problems. The other thing, as I would say to people, is that let's say you're on the hook you're out, you're enjoying the day with your family and one of your generators goes down. If you don't know how that power is managed and mm -hmm. your only hope is to go to the other generator, then, then you're going to limit your experience and you're not going to understand how that those boat loads work. And not so, every boat has two equally sized generators. That, that's correct. So you may think that, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and run all my air conditioners and my ice maker and my misters and my AV system and everything on my 12 kW generator when it really takes 30 kW. Correct. to handle all that Correct. load. So then what happens is we've got sooting issues, we've got we've we've put a too high a demand on that generator. And you could have equipment damage over time from constant um, overcurrent or tripping into it. So you and you want to make sure you go into your overcurrent protection, which I know we're going to go go into a little bit later, but bottom line, when you first get to a boat the easiest thing to tell is looking at the cords. You'll be able to tell whether or not that boat is maintained and whether or not the shore power's integrity is there just from even looking at it. If it looks good and the and the cords are good, and and the and the boat is running and they and they have a fair amount of their heavy loads on, then then you can at least say, okay, you know, we 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 have a good system um, in place. It's going to need a little bit more in depth. Then you want to start turning on and, and finding out what the loads are and what some of these systems have a survey as you go further through the boat to determine are there going to be any problems because unfortunately if there is an electrical problem on a boat it rarely is something that's minor that can be something that can turn into a fire and you certainly wouldn't want that with your family well you know when you when you're in the yacht sales industry um, you, you get a little bit of experience and you learn a few cues when you mm -hmm. first come up to a boat whether it's the listing or whether you're previewing the boat for a client and even before you get on board the boat, open the door and smell sure. the inside of the boat, there are visual cues that you're going to take. You're going to look at the exterior finish of the boat mm -hmm. and you're going to know if it's got a bright shine on it and the varnish all looks good and chrome is polished up, then you know the boat's been well maintained and you can tell the same thing when you just by looking at the power cords on the boat. If you come up to a boat and you see something that's completely mismatched mm -hmm. like this, that's a cue to start looking deeper into other things. This is primarily safety, not cosmetics. Absolutely, safety is number one. It's critically important. Very cool, so with a little quick overview on safety, you know, just uh, here on the table, we've got a variety of other electrical components. We've got some 100 amp connectors, and these are, these are in the process of being built into a SmartWise system like correct. this, correct? correct. So at Wards, they do everything from the beginning. You, you bring in the parts, Correct. These, you don't manufacture these, no. but you do the assemblies and you actually do a lot of stuff for other companies, don't you? You know, we do. One of the things that, uh, that we do is we will take all these parts, we come in and then, and then we assemble them, and most critically is we test them. Um, you know, our, as you and I have spoken in the past off sure. the cuff, our, our, our industry is not necessarily the most regulated, but I think that, that we love our industry and we love our customers and we want the, the boats to be safe. So we make sure that we take the time to have them properly installed, that they are at the proper connection. We have, it's, it's hard over there to see, but, but we, we test every piece of equipment we build. We test equipment that comes in before it goes out to a boat just to make sure there could have been something that, that happens in shipping. And so uh, making sure and ensuring that safety and ensuring the integrity of those parts is critical because all systems and everybody's safety rely upon them. Safety is a big piece of the puzzle. We're gonna go over to the boat. I think Luis is gonna join us over there. And we're gonna dig in a little bit from the cord connection to the boat and how the power gets to the panel and where it goes and what it does. And Christy. if I could give one more plug, I yes. would say that they, you know, they, they say there's a wrong way and there's a right way. Mm -hmm. And then we have what's called a wards way. Okay. And we go out of the way to make sure it's all the way at the top. So um, sometimes that means it may take a little bit longer. Sometimes that survey is going to show you things that, that a broker getting ready to, to sell a boat or, or purchase a boat on behalf. Um, but we will always make sure that we show that and the integrity to the well, customers. That's, and that's why other companies come to you guys to do the assembly of products and for the distribution of products because you guys do it right. Last year we did a, a master's class in uh, galvanic corrosion Absolutely. with your dad mm -hmm. and uh, it was incredibly informative. Here what we're going to do is kind of roll it back just a little bit sure. and talk about some more of the basics. 
but you're absolutely right, and I love the way you put it, there's a wrong way, a right way, and the ward's way. Let's do it 100%. Absolutely. There's nobody legally looking over our shoulder, but let's do it the right way so that we can confidently know that safety is the primary concern and that our customers are safe with their products. We have to do it the ward's way. The ward's way, okay, awesome. We're gonna go out to the boat and we're gonna take a peek at how the, how the electricity goes into the boat and where it goes from there. Okay, so we've had a look at a few of the safety considerations that we want to consider when we first walk up to a boat by looking at the cords and stuff. Christy was very helpful to us over at the shop. Now we're on board a boat at LMC with Luis Lopez. Luis is the general manager of Ward's Marine Electric, and Luis is going to give us a little insight as to what goes on on the panel and where the power goes. Let's go down below and take a peek. Absolutely. Hey, guys. Whoa, look Whoa. here. What are you guys doing here? Alex the Yacht Guy. Welcome. Thanks. Nice to see you as always. How you doing? Alex, what brings you to this neck of the woods? Well, I just got my broker's license. Good and on you, man. The only way to really learn boats is to actually be on them and take a peek around. So this is a perfect opportunity. Alex is a guy who didn't grow up in the boat world, no, but didn't. you've really been immersed in it the last couple of years. If you want to do your brokerage career, you're going to do it right. There are two things that you got to do. Number one, you got to join IYBA. Easy. And I'll be looking for that application this afternoon. You got it. Number two, let's learn some more about electricity because let's, it's one of the most important things for you to consider in brokerage. Let's do All it. Right. Let's take a peek. Let's go. So Luis, on this boat, just quickly peeking here, we've got a hundred amp cord coming in. And on we also side. have on each side. On each side, yes. Okay, well there's a 50 that goes over to there and a hundred over here. That so is we've correct. got them split. Okay. Yeah, well, this is a hose here, but we have a, we have 200. This boat only had 100 amps. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go inside and see where the power Absolutely. goes and what we do with it when it gets there. Alex, your timing is perfect today. Well, this is great because there's a lot of stuff down here I don't know. And like you said, learning is everything. So the more I know, you know, the reality of it is um, there's a lot of stuff, even those of us that have been around the industry a really long time aren't super clear on with regard to electricity. So Luis, one of the things that you and I were talking about over at the shop earlier was overcurrent protection. Just as a starter, right? We've got the cord coming into the boat, supplying the electricity. Where does the electricity go? And how do we protect from fire or mishaps? Well, that's one of the main things that you got to look on, on the electrical system. The shore power is going to have a, um, an overcurrent protection device within 10 feet of the inlet. Okay. So according to ABYC, ABYC which is the minimum standard that we use, right. I think this boat is not, if I'm not mistaken, it's Lloyd's, but you're going to have an overcurrent protection. Then you have, this one has, has a frequency converter. So on this the, is a boning system that's, you know, available primarily on the bigger boats, but this gives you a graphic example of where everything goes. Absolutely. How you, cool is that? Absolutely. This is a boning monitoring system. The, okay. the, the, the system is not boning. The right. control here is dive. Okay. But the um, monitoring system is boning. So you can see everything that is going on electrically on the boat. You can see it here. So you have the, the four cords because this boat has two cords up front and two cords in the back. Okay. You have the frequency converter and you have a split boss. Okay. So right on the secondary side of the converter, you have another overcurrent protection and all that is synchronized with the uh, sub panels uh, okay. uh, overcurrent protection, which is on this uh, so, side here. So the power comes in and then it's distributed to the sub panels and each sub panel is protected by a separate breaker. That is correct. You got that, Alex? I did. Yeah. I'm trying. All right. And it's it's uh, uh, the specification of the breaker has got to be according to that panel. Of course. All these breakers are different. Okay. Because our demands are different on that different correct. panels. That is correct. And here's how we can monitor it. It's showing us we have 209 volts input. Up, oh, and I messed that up. No, that's so let's okay. go back to the main. Uh, operating lock. Okay. Oh. Well, that gives us the ability to, to monitor what's gone on over the past. There you go. This is this will give you all the power that you're using on the boat. So we got That's 207 right. volts coming volts. in on on bus A, bus B. You have the, the uh, 24 current amps is the demand and the frequency. And the frequency yeah, 60 that hertz. That is correct. Okay. So if you go to the uh, short power system, it'll tell you what are you using on short power. The short data, same thing. Then. Uh, you have short control, okay, which is telling you that the uh, the bus are tied, so both buses are 
tied together with one cord. I think they're using one right now okay. one short power cord. Okay. If they use both, this uh, breaker here will open and then you have one on each side. Well, let's go around the corner and take a look at some of the panels that this bus is supplying power to through these breakers because that's more of our distribution, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go around here. Right. So right here, you have two of the panels, two of the um, um, distribution panels on the boat. This boat has many panels around the boat. Sure. This one is machinery one and machinery two, which is everything that it's here on in the engine room. Okay. So like water maker, air compressor, you have fire and bilge pump, uh, head hunter system, battery chargers, uh, last red lights, you know, receptacles. And this stuff is all like that. AC. This is all AC. Okay. This is 208 three phase, 120 volts. Okay. So 208 volts, three phase with 220 volt legs at 60 hertz. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So we've got um, a variety of different systems that are controlled on this leg and another variety of systems that are controlled on that leg. Correct. And each of this panel has a dedicated overcurrent protection, which is very important to protect the panel. Of course it is. And, and the cable uh, feeding the panel. Okay. And All then right. next to that, we have a DC panel. So the DC is going to cater to what systems more? more well, all the uh, the battery power systems like uh, like the Glen Denning cable reels, okay, uh, ventilation system, the Simon system. Um, you have uh, a, a quantum like thickest stabilizer uh, pad control, which mm -hmm. is uh, run by DC, and then you have fuel um, fuel prime pump. Uh, fuel valve controls uh, and you know everything that is it, it's running on DC. Different systems that systems would be here on, on the AC on the, in side. The engine room. That okay. is correct. So one of the things that Christy and I talked about when we were over in the shop is kind of an overview. We talk about safety, we talk about navigation, and we talk about luxury. So safety is what we've talked about here for starters, Alex, and that is where the power comes in and we look at kind of red flags if something looks wrong, but even if something doesn't look wrong, we need to come in and we need to make sure that we've got the proper overcurrent protections. So the distribution, this is all safety related items. To, I guess the thing that a broker can do is when you come on the boat, Alex, and you're looking at this panel, what you wanna see is a neat orderly distribution system that's well labeled, no, no marks that there's ever been any smoke no that's gotten tape, out of the wires. No. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so we want to make sure that there's no uh, additional hole drilled in there with a Dymo label maker that says, you know, uh, uh, another system on right. here. Nothing added on haphazardly. Everything needs to be orderly and structured and clean and in a, in a, in a fashion that's going to maintain safety. So when you're looking for safety, you're going to start at the uh, power cord at the right. pedestal. Right. Make sure that the cable is clean, the connections are tight, there's no loose connection, they're not corroded, and everything starts there, which it's not is hot. Correct. If it's loose, it's going to get hot and it's going to eventually it's going to burn, okay. burn up. So all, right. all the way in, into the panel. And the same thing with the generators. You know, usually for um, brokers, the generator's got to be properly specified to the boat and to the boat's load. Well, there's another safety issue right there. We talked about briefly with Christy over in the shop. And that was that boats have been being refit regularly these days. And Correct. people are expecting more and more conveniences on the boat than maybe when the boat was built originally. So what may have been perfectly adequate as a 20 kW generator, now with more systems, you've got water makers, you've got ice machines, you've got a variety of other issues on, or items on the boat that you want to power. We need to put a bigger generator on. Should we put the biggest generator possible? Not, not at all. That is not uh, the correct way of doing it. To have a very reliable and safety and safe electrical system on a boat, a load analysis is, is critical. So that way you can, you can calculate the, the size of the generators and the size of the shore power that you need. So, so, you so it's, not, it's not just, oh, I have this generator, it's 90 kW, let, let's put it in because it works. It doesn't okay. work like that. So bigger is not always better. No, let's just throw the biggest one we no, can get. No, uh, bigger it's sometimes it's worse. Oh, and interesting. And yes. that's actually and, a red flag. It is. It's if a you big go, red flag. If yes. you go to a 60 foot boat and they say they've got a 45 kW generator on there, that may be that may be an issue right in its own right. right. 
That's interesting. Yeah, the Good generator should be rated at 80% of the capacity, not less than that. Some may 70, 75, but it should be in that range, 70 to 80% of the capacity, not less than that. And not more than, you know, 100%. So 100%, obviously, we're going to have issues with overloading the power of the engine. Then, correct. And, and then we, you're not going to have power when you need it. And we have sooting issues and pollution issues. Yes, you're going to be overloading the system okay. big time. All right. It's amazing. So, yeah. Lots to learn here. It, yeah. There's it's a, a lot, lot to learn. It's a lot of calculation, a lot of math, a lot of uh, things that we have to look at it in order to create and design a proper electrical system on a boat. Well, each and safe, which is the main thing. Each product has its demands and we have to take the cumulative demand of the products that we would use at one time and size the generator accordingly Correct. to that demand. And that okay. goes with everything on the boat, battery charges, battery, because batteries are a, uh, a, a supply as well. You know, it, it's a it, it's, it's a, uh, um, a power supply. Right. So that needs to be uh, sized properly too. And, 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 and breakered and properly and distributed and, and properly. And chargers and the distribution, absolutely. Okay, so our, our hotelery, if you will, and our, and our mechanicals are gonna be quite predominantly powered through AC. And right. we've looked at these distribution panels as a safety item. Um, our our uh, navigation, while it's electrically driven, that's all electronic stuff. And we'll, we'll dig into that in another segment. That's all, yeah, that's all electronic, but it's getting power from the uh, DC and sometimes AC too. Right, yeah, with but converters. Main, mainly the DC uh, part of the system. So we're not gonna run up into the helm on this boat, but you'll find a separate distribution panel for all of your electronics on the DC side and some AC stuff as well, as you mentioned. That's correct. And again, we're gonna be looking for the same type of situation where we have neat, orderly, well-labeled, clean, no burn marks, no you know chips and dings and mismatched bro uh, breakers in there. The third thing that we wanted to talk about is luxury. In luxury on the boat, it's kind of what it's all about, isn't it, Alex? I mean, this That's is- uh, what I want to vote, to yeah. hang out, sit on the back. And even though all of this down here sounds really fun and intriguing, and I mean, I want to sip a cocktail down here, I'd really rather do it upstairs. <laughs> yeah, but that luxury has got to be safe. Right. Which is- yeah. Well, and the luxury, I think, also speaks to the increased demand that we have on the electrical system these days. When, uh, when I started working as a broker, before that, when I was a captain, uh, we didn't have all the equipment that's available to us today. Ice, that came from up at the other end of the dock and it came down to the boat either in a block or a five gallon bucket or a bag. Wow. It didn't come from a machine on the boat. And the machine on the boat draws a lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning and air conditioning on, on the mezzanine area of the boat, significantly more demand. Entertainment so, systems these days, they draw a lot of power. Well, these big amplifiers and stuff like that, they demand a lot of power too. And that's not something that we had available to us in the old days, so that speaks back to our retrofit considerations. When you're selling a used boat, Alex, what you want to be thinking about is, you want to be thinking about when was that boat built? And just thinking back to kind of what were the things that were available to you as, as luxury items at that time in your life? Right. You know, did we have... Uh, a single, uh, a, did we have a big screen TV? Uh, and we got all of the, the volume for whatever we were watching out of that TV. Or did we have a big LED flat panel system with a full audio backup system with all kinds of other conveniences that go with that? Different demands, different needs on the electrical system and different considerations. So if you're looking at a, a 74 foot Hatteras that was built in 1996, and there were plenty of conveniences and luxuries available then. That stuff's changed a lot today. A lot. Yeah, even the um, the uh, very complicated and fancy lighting system that we have these days. That's the that's LED another, systems. The LED system, but the light, the whole lighting system. You know, the automated lighting system, where they change colors, colors, and you can control mm -hmm. it through an app and and. and all kind of stuff. New yeah. signs on the back are now lit that up. It's correct. not just painted on anymore. Underwater lighting. Underwater lighting, yep. yep. So there are a lot more things on the boats that we, we take for granted. They're expected today, whereas they weren't even available when, when many of these boats were put together. 
So it's going to tax our electrical system. It's going to tax our power generation system. So this is why you need to have a good load analysis done anytime you want to put additional equipment on the boat. When you're listing a boat, you want to be thinking about, wow, this thing's got an awful lot of different options, but it's got a 12 and a half kW generator. That's this, correct. This might be a problem. So something to look at if you're interested in buying a boat is the amenities it has and the load capacity, if it's able to provide that provide that for the interest. You know, when you when you buy in a boat or you are do a charter on a boat, the success of that boat to, to, to enjoy that boat and the success of the charter, that's gonna be a reliable, safe electrical system. Without right. the electrical system, there's nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing. So You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because having been a broker for a long time, you take a lot of that for granted and yep. you don't think about it. Um, you think about the, the cosmetics of the boat. You think about what impression did I get when I first walked up to it. You're, you're looking at the specs on the boat before you ever even get there and you're looking at the number of hours on the engine. You're looking at the, uh, the age of the enclosures. You're looking at whether the electronics have been upgraded. You're looking at whether interior components have been upgraded or, you know, was it built custom originally and it's spectacular and you never want to touch that. But what you don't think about so often is the electrical system and what amenities that electrical system supports and provides and how that's going to speak to your utility of that boat. You mentioned charter and in the charter world, people demand an awful lot. You guys get a lot of input from the charter folks. Yeah. When when you spending money and you know money to this level, you want to spend the money. A lot of people spend money on what they see. So they spend money on a sofa, a nice curtains, you know, a nice table, uh, a nice dining set, but electricity you don't see it. So it's very hard and that is the most important part of, of, of a system on a boat. Because you don't see it, a lot of people have a tendency not to spend money on out it. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, if it's, it's a break of this bat, just bypass it or put a tape on it, hold it in place. And uh, But if they have to spend, uh, you know, $100,000 on uh, artwork to put them on the boat, that's not a problem. Right. Or, or a nice sofa or sheets for the beds and all that, because they, they are seeing that. They know where their money is going. but. They don't see the electric, electrical system, and 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 without the electrical system, they can't use the sofa, or they can't use the curtains, or the art, or the, right. the art is not going to light up, and you know, things like that. And we see that on on, on the customers lately. Uh, customers la lately are getting more and more educated because of the, you know, how uh, complicated the uh, yachts and boats are getting these days. Well, and we also have the access to information. Right. You know, you can Google pretty much anything. Yes. You know, Alex, one of the things, there, there are two pieces to being a broker. There's listing and there's selling, right? And one of the most difficult things about listing boats is having some of this knowledge, seeing things that are a challenge, and having the courage to speak to your seller and say, look, I, I really like to have the listing on your boat, but these things need to be addressed. You know, there's a lot of pay me now or pay me later. You don't, want to, you don't want to squander an opportunity when you have the chance to sell a boat and you don't want to squander that opportunity because nobody told the seller that he really needed to do this before it entered into the marketplace. So when we're looking at a boat to list it, one of the things that can be a very valuable thing to do is if you see some things that are suspect, speak towards, speak to your favorite marine electrical company and have an evaluation done on the boat. Absolutely. Due to load analysis, have a, a, a certified electrician come into the boat and take a look at these things. And that way you have the peace of mind of knowing that you're bringing a quality product yes, to market. Yeah, exactly. You need to usually, uh, usually a, a full electrical survey, it's the way to go because that'll save time and money to both parties, whether you're selling or buying. And, and that is a good approach. It's always difficult to ask a guy to spend money when you're, when you're asking him to sell, to sell his boat for him. But you know, if you think about it, every house you've ever lived in, when it was time to go sell it, you didn't just walk in there with a camera when the towels were laying on the kitchen or the bedroom, bathroom floor right. or you know a, a wall needed painting or whatever. 
you make it ready for sale. And these are some of the things that make a product ready for the marketplace. Very important considerations. Absolutely. Luis, thanks so much. You know, power distribution, the safety aspects of power distribution, and giving thought to how that impacts the users, the safety of the people on board, and also, Alex, how it impacts those of us in the sales side of the industry. What are the things that we need to be looking for? What can we know very quickly as we walk up and as we continue to educate ourselves? What can we know when we look at a panel like this? And a guy maybe did a nice job of drilling a hole in there and putting three extra breakers in with a dyno label and maker on it. Well, he may not have done it all right, though. Right. Correct. So, yeah, that's, uh, I think, focusing on safety, which is the main. You don't want to have a problem out there with customers or with your family. That's, and I've seen that a lot. Right. And, and it's not it's, it's not a good that's, uh View. It's not nice. It's not well, good. I can imagine. All. I mean, yeah. You know, the water fire, stuff, things a, start going off, you know, fires, whatever it is. A fire on a boat, it's, if you can, you know, it's not. It's the worst. It's, it's your worst, worst nightmare. It's the worst that you can, yes. I picked up two guys out of the water one time on a boat, that, from a boat that had been on fire. And I have to tell you, it was one of the scariest experiences I ever had running boats, wow. was having a guy having to deal with fire. And it can happen very, very easy if the boat is not properly done. Exactly. It's good to know. Alex, yep. I'm really glad we ran into you. Congratulations on Pleasure's a new turn for, you, for, for your career. Nice seeing you again. Pleasure of mine, Luis. I'm going to be looking for that application this I afternoon. I will have it in this afternoon. I like it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for your help, Luis. Right. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. All right.